Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with School of Motion. And in this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a GIF using After Effects. Now, there's a problem, and the big problem is you can't natively create GIFs inside of After Effects, or at least you can't create GIFs inside of After Effects by using the built-in tools in After Effects. There is a fantastic tool called GIF Gun that I'll get to a little bit further on in this tutorial. But for the most part, in order to create a GIF using After Effects, you have to export a finished video and then convert that video into a GIF. Now, the good thing is if you use the Creative Cloud and if you're watching this video, there's a really good chance that you do, you will actually be able to use Photoshop to create a GIF in only a matter of seconds. Now, for this video, I'm gonna show you four different ways to create a GIF using After Effects. Each one of these methods have their own advantages and disadvantages, but I encourage you to go check out the blog post over on our website if you want to learn more about when to use each one of these solutions whenever you're creating a GIF. So if you're ready to take your meme game up a notch, let's hop in. So the first method that I want to show you is using Photoshop to export your GIF. Now the first thing that we're going to have to do, of course, is export our final video from After Effects. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this short video clip that we have here. So as you can see, there's not a lot to this. It's just a simple one and a half second looping GIF animation. And we're going to go ahead and export this video. So go ahead and add it to your render queue. You can hit shift command forward slash or you can just go to composition add to render queue. And I'm going to use uh, just one of these presets that I have here. Uh, I'm going to use a ProRes 422 preset. But if you wanted to, you could go into your output module settings. And let's say you choose QuickTime. You could then go to your format options and simply just select ProRes 422. But I have my preset saved there. And let me encourage you to go save presets in the future if you do a lot of exporting in After Effects, which you probably do. Uh, so go ahead and set that as your output module and then I'm going to set my output to my desktop and we'll keep this as School of Potion, which, you know, is kind of a, a side project we're working on over here at School of Motion. Rhymes are really the best way to choose a good business model and go ahead and hit render. Excellent. So now if we go to our desktop, we can see that we have a one and a half second video. So go ahead and hop over to Photoshop. Now you may be surprised to hear this, but you can actually import video into Photoshop. So if you just go to file open, we can select our video file from our desktop and hit open. And you'll also see over here in the layers panel, there is a new video group layer. So let's go ahead and export this video into a GIF. So to do that, go up to file and save for web. And it may take just a second to load up on your machine, but once it loads, you'll be able to see and preview your GIF. Now, before I hit that save button, I actually want to walk you through what all of these settings mean here, because they're all somewhat important uh, whenever you're exporting a GIF in Photoshop. And, and let me you know, take this moment to clarify that Photoshop is actually a very highly professional way to export a GIF. There are a lot of very customizable options that are available to you that aren't necessarily available if you use, let's say, uh, Giphy or GIF Rocket to export a GIF. So if you want a professional solution, let's say you're working on a design firm's website header, or you need a really polished and fancy GIF for your specific, uh, let's say, website or blog, you probably want to use Photoshop. And besides that, Photoshop gives you these kind of live GIF size readouts before you hit the save button so you can see how big your final GIF is gonna be before you export, which makes it extremely helpful to use. So let me go through these settings here before we export and uh, we can get a better understanding of what all of these individual settings mean. So uh, our first setting right here is our color reduction algorithm. And that's just a fancy way of saying this is the way in which Photoshop is going to scan our video and create colors based on the colors found inside of that video. Now, there are a lot of settings that can be kind of confusing here, but the biggest thing to remember is just do whatever makes sense for your individual GIF. So for this specific GIF that we're creating here, I'm gonna leave it on selective, but 
For example, if you were working with a GIF that had a gradient in it, you might want to use adaptive because it can be a little more smooth, but the file size can also be greater. So it's just this kind of trade-off between do you want to have high quality GIFs or do you want to have low file size GIFs? And, and how does color relate to your specific GIF animation that you're trying to export? This GIF only has one, two, three, four, five different colors. Whereas if we were exporting a video, it might have, you know, thousands of different colors and we have to reduce the number of colors down to a specific number. So I'm gonna leave it on selective, but it just depends on whatever GIF you're trying to export. And colors is exactly what you might think it is. It's the number of colors that will be in your final GIF. So for example, this GIF that we're working on here, we don't need 256 colors. In fact, if you look down here at the color table, a lot of these colors look pretty much identical. So we can actually change that to a different number. Let's say we want to do 16. Or we could even probably drop this down to eight. And you can see that even after we drop the colors down to eight, there really isn't much of a difference in the visual perception of the way this GIF looks. And our file size has been significantly reduced. And now we're only at 150K, which makes it great for the web. Remember, when you're uploading images to the web, you really don't want them to be larger than two to three megabytes, unless there are some really extenuating circumstances because people will have a hard time loading them whenever they go and view your website from, let's say, their phone. The next box that we can take a look at here is your dithering options. And dithering is just basically colored noise that will be added into your scene. So if you think about the way that low quality video kind of has colored noise, let's say in the dark parts of the image or in gradients from one color to another color, that's exactly what dithering does. So if you have, let's say a flat image like this one, we could select no dither and it's not gonna make a huge difference. In fact, it actually lowered our file size by selecting no dither. But sometimes if you're exporting a GIF that comes from live action footage, by selecting dither, you can actually reduce your file size. And I highly encourage you to just mess around with your individual GIF to get the right dithering option for you. And then dither over here, if you do actually turn on some sort of dithering, this dither percentage will kind of dial in the amount of dithering for your scene. But since we're not gonna be using any dithering, we'll just turn it off. Now, transparency is exactly what it sounds like. It actually allows you to have transparent pixels in your image. And this is really cool because it basically gives you the option to have alpha channels. But there's a big caveat here. GIFs don't actually support variable alpha channels, which means that a pixel can only be 100% on or 100% off. There's no 50% or in between colors. So for example, if we kind of take a look at our GIF that we have here, and, and in fact, you can hit this play button and preview your GIF, just in case you're wondering. So let's pretend that our GIF here has a transparent background. So school of potion, and then this pink stuff over here is seen, but this blue background is transparent. If that was the case, you could hypothetically export this video frame with this no transparency dither selected and it would have alpha channels in the background. But whenever you do that, it's gonna have some hard edges that don't exactly look right. So if you don't want it to have hard edges, you could select one of these dithering options to kind of feather out the pixels on the edge of your GIF. And then you could go in and select your matte color. So we can use our, let's say, eyedropper color to fill in the color of these edges. And if you wanted to, you could select the eyedropper here and select the background blue and then change the matte color to the eyedropper color. And that will help Photoshop to kind of feather out these edges so they're not so harsh. But keep in mind, you'll then have some awkward edge pixels here. So all in all, the thing to remember is simply that you can export GIFs with alpha channels, although I do not recommend doing it most of the time. And then we can obviously go in here and change the dithering and diffusion amount for the pixels on the edge of your video frame. So because we don't need transparency, I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that checkbox. So interlaced is another one of these really cool features that are hard to find in other GIF creation softwares. So if you select interlaced, it will actually load your GIFs in multiple passes. So there will be a low res pass and then a high res pass. This will basically allow people to go ahead and see your final GIF 
and then load a higher res format in place of that lower res format. It's really great if you want people, let's say on a mobile phone, to be able to see your GIF instantaneously and not have to wait for the entire thing to load before seeing some sort of preview. It's a really cool feature, and if you want to optimize your images for a mobile platform, I recommend having it selected, but keep in mind that it will increase your file size by just a little bit. This web snap feature down here will allow you to convert your colors to web safe colors, but in general, you'll probably want to keep this at 0% most of the time. Instead of web snap, I like to use this convert to sRGB, which is supported by most modern monitors. And we can keep going down here. Preview is basically the preview colors that are over here. Um, we can just keep this at monitor color. The metadata is really interesting, so it allows you to add in the metadata info to your GIF. And if you want to anonymously post this GIF to the internet, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could select none, and then our GIF has no metadata information. The image size is obviously the image size, so you can adjust the width and the height right there, or you can adjust the percentage. So we could just type in 50%, and you'll see that our image size is automatically scaled down here. Now, this quality slider down here has to do with the way in which Photoshop is going to interpret this new smaller resolution, or it could be a larger resolution if you wanted to scale up for whatever reason. Now, typically, I'll keep it on by cubic, although some people say if you're scaling a GIF down, you want to keep it at by cubic sharpener. And if you're scaling a GIF up and making it larger, you want to use smoother. But I find that by cubic works for most of my situations. And this looping options is pretty obvious. We want to keep it at forever, although sometimes you may want to keep it at once. Let's say you have an animated text that kind of writes on for a website header and then stays on forever. We'll go ahead and leave that to once, but for our GIF, we want it to loop, so we're going to keep it at forever. And once you've done all of those settings, we can actually go ahead and hit save, and we'll save this to the desktop. We'll call this School of Potion and hit save. And if we preview this, you can see we have a high-res GIF out of Photoshop, and it is super small. If we go to the info here, we can see that it is only 135 kilobytes. That is tiny for images, especially one that is 960 pixels wide. So Photoshop did a really great job, although that took a little bit of time. So now let me show you the fastest way to create GIFs in After Effects. So we're going to hop back over to After Effects, and we're going to take a look at a new composition here. So we have this looping video here and we want to convert it to a GIF. Now, typically you would have to export a video and then convert it using another application. But if you use this amazing tool inside of After Effects called GIF Gun, you can actually create a GIF basically inside of After Effects. And it works super, super easily. So GIF Gun is actually already installed on my machine and you can see that it's uh, basically two buttons, right? Like you have settings or you have make gif and it doesn't get much easier than that if we go to our settings here we can adjust all the settings that you would think you'd be able to adjust we can change the folder where it is exported to we can change the width the number of colors the frames per second and for gifs typically you don't want to go higher than 15 frames per second we can keep ours let's say at 12 and we can render with lossless that basically says that the gif is going to be created from extremely high res video and that's perfectly fine. And we have this compression here, you know, we can keep this at medium, although you could do none and our GIF would probably be pretty small uh, already. You can see that GIF gun has the ability to keep alpha channels just like Photoshop, although you don't actually have any of those dithering options, but you know, it's there if you need it. And we have this progressive render option, which if you are resizing your GIF to a different size, you want to make sure that is selected and it will just increase the render speed of your composition. Uh, we have save video copy, which makes sense, saves a copy of the video. We have a looping GIF, which we want this one to loop. And then we have open GIF folder whenever the GIF is done being created and we wanna make sure that's selected. So the only thing I'm gonna change here is the custom folder and I'm gonna go ahead and select our desktop and hit open here. So we are going to export our composition to our desktop and then I'm gonna change this width to 940 so it matches the gif that we created in photoshop and hit done and then all you have to do is hit the make gif button and that's going to send it to your render queue and automatically export it so now if we go to our desktop we can see that we have a brand new gif and you can see that the quality of this gif is really high as well 
In fact, we can see that the GIF is only 59 kilobytes, much smaller than the Photoshop one. Now, GIF Gun is not free. You do have to pay for it, but it is a fantastic tool if you create a lot of GIFs, and if you're anything like me, you will be creating a lot of GIFs in the future, so I highly recommend downloading it, and in fact, you can download a free trial version on AE Scripts. So that's GIF Gun. Now let's move on to method number three. So we have this new composition here, and it is simple just like the other ones, and let's say we want to make this into a looping GIF. What we're gonna do is use a third party app. So I'm gonna go to composition, add to render queue. And just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and select our ProRes export format. And then we'll make sure this is saved to the desktop and hit render. Now, if we go to our desktop, we can see that the video is exported and it's about two seconds long and we wanna convert this to a GIF. Now, the tool that I'm gonna use here is called GIF Rocket, and it is actually only available for Mac, but there are a lot of GIF creation softwares out there. In fact, a quick Google search will reveal uh, quite a few different tools that you can use. So this tool is actually really easy to use. If you just hit the settings here, you can change the width, so we can do 940, and you can change the quality to whatever you want, and then drop the video right on top here, and it will convert your video to a GIF. And we can see that it's 100 kilobytes, and if we play it back here, you know, it looks pretty much just as good as the other GIFs. So this last option is admittedly not my favorite option, but if you, let's say, work in an environment where you are not allowed to install more software on your machine, or you don't trust downloading third-party apps, you can use this method. So I'm gonna go ahead and export our last GIF here, and we'll go ahead and go to ProRes and it's exporting to our desktop. And it rendered out here. And we have, just like before, a one to two second looping video. So what I'm gonna do is actually go to the internet. So we're gonna go to good old Google Chrome here and we can use an online GIF creating service. So I'm gonna use Giphy here, but there are literally dozens, if not hundreds of options out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop our video file into Giphy. And all we have to do is enter in some information here. So we'll do school of motion and we'll go ahead and hit upload GIFs. And so this will take just a minute, but it's incredibly fast and incredibly easy to use. And there you go. We have a high quality GIF that is on the internet. And while you're there, you can just go and browse uh, the rest of uh, humanity, which is a little depressing. So those are four different ways to export GIFs in After Effects. Now, before I let you go, I want to show you a few different methods for reducing the overall file size of your GIFs. So one thing to remember when you're exporting a GIF is to keep the backgrounds as simple as possible. We have this looping animation here with this kind of texturized background, but if we exported this GIF, the file size would be much larger than that of this one with a very simple plain background. So Keep that in mind. So another thing to remember is that a GIF's file size is very much dependent on the number of colors in your scene. So this one that has a gradient ramp or you know this gradient on this kind of potion drop here will actually be larger in size than our original GIF over here. And there's more things to think about. Make sure you go to your composition and composition settings. Make sure your frame rate is low. 12 is fantastic. If you wanna reduce your file size, you can also make sure that there are no transparent pixels. Another tip if you're using live action footage is to use a software or a tool like Warp Stabilizer so that your GIF creator can actually blend pixels together between frames and save on file size. So I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Now, keep in mind that GIFs are a fantastic resource for marketing your skills as a motion designer. So if you're not on Instagram and sharing out your stuff consistently, I highly recommend at least giving it a shot and uh, seeing what other people are doing. You know, it's a fantastic way to get inspiration and share your artwork with others. If you want to learn more about creating GIFs in After Effects, go check out the blog post over at School of Motion. And of course, if you ever want to learn the latest motion design, After Effects, or just industry techniques, go check out School of Motion. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.